goodness of fit test. You are conducting a multinomial goodness of fit hypothesis test for the claim that four categories occur with the following frequency. So the null hypothesis is that in the population, 10% are category A, 30% are category B, 10% are category C, and 50% are category D. And what we have is we have some observed frequencies here from each category, A, B, C, and D. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what the expected frequencies would be if these proportions are actually accurate. So what we want to do first is we want to figure out how many observations there are total in the sample. So we just add up all of the frequencies. 11 plus 32 plus 24 plus 58 gives us 125. So there's a 125 total observations. And we should expect 10% of them to be from category A, 30% to be from category B, 10% to be from category C, and 50% to be from category D. So I find all those percentages of 125, 10, 30, 10, and 50. And these are the expected values for those individual categories. Once we know the expected values, we can put them into the table. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate all these individual differences from the observed values and the expected values to get rid of the signs to make sure they're all positive. I'm going to square them, but then I'm going to divide them by the expected frequencies. So I'll have the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So for instance, the first observed frequency is 11. I subtract from it the expected, which was 12.5, and I, divide, I squared that, squared that difference, and then I divided by the expected frequency. The result was 0.18. I did that for each of the individual rows. So 32 minus 37.5 squared divided by 37.5, and I did it for the last two, and I got these numbers here. That's what this z squared is. That's what's going to go in this column. So those are the individual differences squared and then normalized by dividing by the expected frequency. So those values go into to that last column in the table. The chi-squared test statistic that we're looking for is actually the sum of these z-squared values. So the chi-squared test statistic is actually the sum of all these z-squareds. So the chi-squared test statistic is just 0.18 plus 0.807 plus 10.58 plus 0.324, which is 11.891. That is my chi-squared test statistic. After we found the chi-squared test statistic, we want to know where that is in this um, null distribution. The null distribution is under the assumption that this null hypothesis is true. If this null hypothesis is true, I would expect the, ob the um, observed values to equal the expected values. And that would mean that the sum of all those z squareds would be very close to zero. So the chi-squared test statistic starts at zero. The smallest value is zero. And the larger that value gets, the more unlikely it is that this null hypothesis is true. Because if the null hypothesis is true, we would expect exactly the expected values to occur in each category or around there. So the further that is from the truth, the larger this chi-squared test statistic will be. So we have a right-tailed test. So this is the chi-squared test statistic, 11.891. And remember, the larger that test statistic is, the more evidence there is against the null hypothesis. Next thing we want to do, since we know that 11.891 is the chi-squared test statistic and it's in this null distribution that uh, starts at zero, we want to know what's the probability of getting a chi-squared test statistic this large or larger if the null hypothesis is true. So we're looking for the p-value to be the area to the right of 11.891 in the chi-squared distribution, which is this... Um, right skewed distribution here with uh, three degrees of freedom because the degrees of freedom are equal to the number of categories which is four in this case minus one so I have three degrees of freedom this is my chi-squared distribution 
And now I can find a p-value with this chi-squared test statistic by using Python. To use Python to find a p-value, I can import scipy.stats as stats, and then I can do the complement or one minus stats.chi-squared.cdf. This is the chi-squared CDF. The chi-squared CDF would give me this white area up to chi-squared, so I have to do one minus to find the complement, which is the area to the right. I just put in my chi-squared test statistic, which is 11.891, and the degrees of freedom separated by a comma, and when I run this, it gives me this value. This is the area to the right of that chi-squared test statistic, 11.891, in a chi-squared distribution with three degrees of freedom. So this is my p-value. This is my p-value. So my p-value is 0 0.0078 when I round it to four decimal places. Once you have the p-value, we can then conduct the hypothesis test. So what would be the conclusion of this hypothesis test if the significance level were 1%? So at a 1% significance level, I would actually reject this null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha. And we know that if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis.